back to the shop. Awesome to have you here today. This is fence build number two. Super stoked about what's on the schedule for today. Martin and I are gonna be working on some horizontal bars for the fence that the pickets get attached to. Hopefully doing some uh, drilling, maybe just starting to assembly on that. We're gonna be forging the top cap, which is the part that your hand touched to this fence. It's a uh, two by three quarter, a little bit chunky forging. Nice contour shape to it, looking forward to seeing that done. And hopefully, I'm gonna jump on and maybe do a prototype for the element that goes in between the pickets, which is a horseshoe, stylized a little bit. We can talk more about that later. But for now, Martin's got the forge warming up, so let's go see what he's up to. Okay, so Martin just uh, finished doing the layout here for all the holes in the bottom bars and the middle bars, which the pickets will be attached to. They get riveted on the middle bars and tendoned on the bottom. So he's gonna be at the mill milling machine doing that. And then I'm gonna jump over back to the forge and start forging the element that will be going between these pickets. So we'll go talk about that over there. Okay, if you make horseshoes for a living, you're not gonna wanna watch this next sequence. Back in 2016 when I designed this fence, we wanted horseshoes to be a part of it, but I, because of the overall uh, way the project was going, I really stylized it, so there's a lot of texture. It looks like a horseshoe, it's not a horseshoe. I'm okay with that, hopefully you are. The other, the other problem that I have today is, of course, when I built it in 2016, I didn't write down any of my dimensions for starting material. So I can't remember, I'm, I'm feeling like it was 13 and a half inches to start this horseshoe. So I'm gonna quickly build a, a sample to make sure that the material length is correct so that then we can get into cutting it all and, and building them all. So let's go build that first horseshoe and see how it works.
getting hot in here, guys. Wow. Okay, so I'm relatively stoked on how that turned out. It looks pretty close, though. The, the best way I can describe it is like when you've made something in the past but forget about it and then remake it, it's sort of like reading a book you've read before. As you're going along, you're like, I don't remember this. Oh, oh yeah, 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 I totally remember this. Oh yeah, yeah, okay on that jig. Oh yeah, I was using that jig and oh yeah, I bent it a little further. It's kind of this weird feeling. So anyways, it's what it feels like when I'm making this. The only thing I'm not happy about on this shoe is the cross peen hammer that I was using. It's way too sharp, it cuts like crazy. Um, my good hammer is, the handle broke on it, so I just don't have it right now. I'm, I'm super hate a sharp cross peen. It drives me nuts. I should, uh, I should actually show you my good hammer, and we should quickly talk about this just briefly. Let's quickly do it. I'm just gonna sit down because I'm like super tired, you know? Okay, here we go. Okay, so I just grabbed a couple of my hammers here. Again, now, let's take this into consideration. This is what I like, doesn't mean what you like. I don't preach hard on any one particular way with hammers, but I'll show you what I like because I like it, then let you make your own opinion. Hang on. Okay, so this is the hammer I was just using. Hopefully you can see that it's like pretty abrupt there. This is how you get the hammers when you typically buy them. Hopefully again, you can see that, which is just typical, it's like completely rounded. And this is my hammer that I like. So it's almost flat uh, in this way with relatively sharp corners and then lightly crowned this way. Here's why I like a flat one versus the round one. Well, the round one is actually the worst because no matter what angle you're at, you always are gonna get the radius of that material, so your material will only move the same amount. If you go with a flat one, you have a ton of options because if you hit directly flat, you're getting a lot of surface area, but as you tip your hammer, suddenly the corner starts jumping in, and so you can actually draw material a lot faster. So the steeper the angle you are, you can make texture, or you can draw material rapidly one way or the other way, and then if you want it to smooth up and not have that sharp cross beam, when you get close to the end, you just start like this, and it's almost like a planishing type of hammer. So I, I always bank with relatively flat, with a, a radius cut a corner on that side, and I think that's your best bang for back. I don't particularly love anything specifically about this hammer, except that I was, I've been swinging this hammer for like a long time, and you can actually see it was super soft, and look how much of an angle that has warped into. But man, it's like the dream to swing because it just, like so dead accurate to the way I swing. I actually wonder if it wouldn't be smart to swing with hammers unhardened for a while and then harden them up. You'd have a very like customized hammer. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. But anyways, it's just interesting to look at how much that's mushroomed over the years and stuff. So I just need to put a handle on this guy and get going back to it. I'd actually like to spend some time making some hammers for myself. I've never really done that. I like the one he'd hammer obviously, but that was just a dead blow hammer. Um, and really sit down and make a hammer that like I'm perfect about. This one, this one's a little bit too heavy for me, I think. I'm getting weak, guys. You know, all the power hammer action, start to lose your strength. Not to say that I ever had it, but you know what I mean. Anyways, let's go, uh, let's go jump in and see how Martin's doing at the mill there, drilling those holes. Let's see if he's making any success over there. So these bars are all drilled and Dan Martin just finished that up. So I think what we're gonna do next is get on the top cap for the railing. So that'll be uh, two inches by three quarter flat bar. And then uh, we've got this special die that we've set up in the power hammer that you forge it and it squishes. So it makes a contour on the top and it's nice kind of, uh, just feels nice when you grab the fence and hold on to it. So Martin, if you're up for it, we're gonna hit that up on the power hammer, get going. Here we go.
really happy with the progress that we've got done on the fence here so far. I'm really uh, excited to start assembling things now that we are getting really close. Assembly is always so much fun because you start to see all the parts that you've been working on come together. So hopefully that'll be in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Would love it if you would like this video. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and we will see you next time. Thank you.